Now the Target 12 investigators digging into the high cost of the controversial Pawtucket Soccer Stadium deal. The newly established minor league team Rhode Island FC is supposed to start playing at the facility next year. Target 12 investigator Eli Sherman has been covering this issue for literally years, right Eli? And yep. he's here now in studio. So Eli, Rhode Island government agencies have officially closed on this bond deal. So the hefty price tag for taxpayers is getting some national attention now that we have the numbers. Yeah, Ted, it's a lot. And uh, to be clear, this is no longer a proposal. The deal is done. And some bond documents that we got are now revealing just how expensive the project has gotten. I want you to take a look at this chart. Rhode Island taxpayers are going to spend $132 million total on this bond for the stadium. That blue part at the bottom, that represents the $27 million that's actually going into construction of the stadium. Rhode Island taxpayers have to pay all that back to bondholders over 30 years, plus interest, financing, costs, and other administrative fees. It gets a little complicated, but in simple terms, Rhode Islanders are going to spend $132 million to fund $27 million of construction. The numbers are just, I know you and I were both taken aback because we've covered various bond deals before. And just to help folks understand how unusual this is, take a look at this. The national headline on a national article last week from Bloomberg News, Rhode Island City draws eye-popping yield on municipal debt for new soccer arena. And the story goes on to say that local taxpayers are, quote, paying dearly for this project. Eli, you reported more than a year ago as well that the, the forecast showed the stadium isn't going to make nearly enough money in terms of new tax revenue to cover the cost of this bond. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what we're seeing with these bond documents also is that that really the, the governor is prepared to go to lawmakers and ask for more money if there's a need. And that really flies in the face of what they've been saying for years that they won't, you know, that taxpayers will not be on the hook for this. Yeah, because we were, <clears throat> we've been told that, you know, this is going to be covered by the stadium, this, taxpayers won't be on the hook, and now we know a lot of money every year is going to be going into this. Let's take a look at uh, one other piece of this deal, which is interesting, which is, well, how much is it going to cost to attend a game? So, as you've been saying, you've been going through these bond documents, and if you look into it, they have kind of projected what they think the cost is going to be compared with some of the other prominent sports teams in our region. Yeah, absolutely. The, the developer of the team has played it coy in terms of what it's going to cost to catch a game. But these bond documents, they did show um, a breakdown of those things. The grand, grand reveal here is that a ticket's going to cost you $29.50 on average. And by comparison, you can see here that the PC's men's basketball game is $47, New England Revs. $38, P. Bruin, $30, and a Brown football game there at $25. So it's going to be interesting to see what the attendance looks like once this stadium is finally built. Well, Eli has a lot more information on this project on WPRI.com. That's also where you can find my recap in the Nisi's Notes column from this past weekend. Eli, thanks for being here. Great to be here.